go visit Venture. Possibly law school, possibly something political. There's a new job I think of every day that I'm like, oh, actually, that could be fun. Ultimately, I want to be a judge, but um, obviously, I have to become a lawyer, go to law school first, get the hang of that. I'm interested in so many things, uh, which I think is great because that just means I have so many more options. Anything that had to do with inventing, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to sit in a shop and just create stuff and then go to a group of people and be like, here's what I made. Do you guys want to invest in it? Chartering is a verb. It's not a school. Most children couldn't go across town and find another school, even though they had access to it. So that's how chartering came about, to provide more opportunities for children in their own neighborhood. You can never have too many ideas to improve personalized learning. That's where teachers get to shine. You could call it like a democratic school, project-based, teacher-led, or at Avalon, we run the entire aspect of the school, so there is no principal, and we do all of our budgeting. We are the majority on the school board. We do all our peer review, our personnel, you know, any aspect of running the school. We're um, 200 students, and it's grades six through 12. We have about 35 to 40 percent of students in special education because of the highly individualized model. We're probably about 75 to 80 percent white. We also have a high population of student, L, the LGBT community and transgender students. For the high school, it's more like a typical college student where they might have a couple classes, but then the rest of their day, um, they're doing work for their classes or in their projects. They have a lot of freedom, and they get to decide. They get to look at all the state standards that are required. They look at everything that they need to do, and they get to decide. Do they want to take a class in that? Do they want to do a project in that? So they get to figure that out with support, <laughs> with a lot of support. Okay, my senior project is working with wood and metal. I have a giant log of white ash, and what I wanted to do as my end goal was to create a bench out of it. I went to a lot of different schools, and that did not not work for me. But then there was also no support in terms of what you were learning. Like you'd be in a class, and if you were lost or if you'd be behind a bit, no one would help you. What works for me is me being able to tell my advisors and my teachers, hey, this is what I'm interested in, and I want to learn things, and I want to be in a lab and experiment with stuff. I want to build rockets, and, uh, and I, they were allowed me to do that. The interest base keeps them motivated. You find a lot of the students who are the most disengaged, they just haven't felt connected about why does this matter. Tell me why this way of learning, where I haven't been validated all these years, is the best way. When we first worked on the charter school bill back in 1991, we were really only looking for more opportunities for Minnesota children. We never thought that there would be a whole new sector called the charter sector. Minnesota, of course, is very different. We don't have very many charter networks because that is not what the original vision was. We started this thinking we were going to create schools new. There weren't going to be networks. But you see, a good idea is always built upon, right? And so in other states, things started to, to emerge that way. So Alliance College Ready Public Schools is a charter network of free public schools in the Los Angeles area. We will have 28 middle and high schools serving just over 12,000 low-income students. We are the largest charter network in the city, and I think we may actually still be the largest in the state. And we're larger, I think, than 75% of all the school systems in the state of California. Every year, 91 to 93% of our students graduate from high school is with a college-ready curriculum is pretty significant, and we're really proud of that. There's a common belief with everybody here, whether you're a student, um, teacher, administrator, office staff, that uh, although we put in longer days, longer times, and, and more during the school year than, say, some of the neighboring schools, um, the results of doing all that are really paying off and benefiting the students. We are a college-ready school, so upon enrollment in ninth grade, the big message that we send out to parents is that our mission is to get your child to graduate high school and into a college. That is our top priority. For my family in general, like my cousins, I'm the first one to actually go to college and like 
experience everything like I guess college life because it's kind of like scary because I don't want to let down my family like I know I'm capable of it but I guess the pressure is like oh what if I mess up I feel like in the back of your head you're always thinking about college this high school prepares you for it so I feel like I wouldn't end up in the same place that I am today so the challenge for charters as they've grown is can you do it in a way that you don't turn into a large bureaucratic institution um, and you got to battle that every day right what i'm most concerned about is that we have different sectors in the charter sector we have networks and we have individual schools i think there's room for everyone and we don't want one to dominate the other we have to bring it back to the origins if chartering is going to succeed.